This, um, you know, so from a strategy standpoint, you've, you've sort of got the why, you've got the, the what, you've got the how, and then of course you have to actually translate that into initiatives. So we went through this process, and you know, again, many of these things were very reaffirming of how we've run ourselves as a firm, but we came out with um, 10 initiatives that we grouped under these sort of four broad categories. And um, you know, the first one was to broaden and deepen relationships with uh, existing clients and prospective new clients. The second was to you know, really make sure we were the cost leader. The third was to master new markets. And the fourth was to energize our culture. And there were two or three initiatives under each one of these uh, um, broad categories. And the question we asked ourselves for each of the initiatives was, does this tie, does this, is this consistent with the why we exist? Is it consistent with driving that flywheel? Okay, are we actually making the flywheel spin? And so, um, just to give you a couple of examples, I won't run through the whole 10 initiatives, but you know, in broadening and deepening relationships, this has led us to re-engineer, if you will, how we serve retail clients, people who come to us directly. So we've been, we're in the middle of making a lot of change there to make sure we're gonna keep that flywheel going. You know, on the price and cost leadership, this led us um, a year ago, we reduced fees for two million investors. You know, we basically changed a um, pricing program that allowed us to reduce the, the cost of investing uh, for two million people by about 30%. And so it was, it was a direct outcome of uh, all this work. You know, mastering new markets, we've actually been um, planting uh, the Vanguard flag overseas. And so uh, one of the things we're trying to do is take this message to the UK, to Canada, to Hong Kong, and to uh, Australia, and, and you know, several other markets. And so um, you know, that's reflected in the initiatives. And again, um, we're asking ourselves the exact same question. It was interesting. We just opened our Canadian office. We haven't even launched yet. And I think there have been 100 stories written about us. And um, the um, Canadian. Uh, the existing Canadian providers, on average, charge about two and a half percent to manage a, a basic equity fund. You know, we'll come in at about 0.3 percent, 0.4. You can imagine we're being very well received by the competitors in Canada. So, um, but the press loves it. You know, the press loves it. And then finally, um, energizing the culture. Um, you know, one of the things um, I haven't really spent as much time on, and again, we can maybe get to this in Q and A, but. Um, we have a fundamental belief that if you want to be a world-class provider of anything, you have to have great people. Now, I will tell you that is not um, consistently um, believed uh, across all business channels. You know, there are many places who, when you read the literature, you know, they talk about, you know, the knowledge workers, and they're sort of like um, roving samurai. You know, they move from company to company or project to project, and so forth, and. Um, you'll hear people talked about as a commodity. You know, we think people are a special resource, not a commodity. And one of the really important things for us is um, we, we think there's a direct link to having very happy, engaged people with how service is reflected to the end client. And we think if you don't do that, you're not going to be a world-class service provider. And I, you know, I'd ask you just to sort of comb your own memory banks or your own experiences for this. So um, the risk of offending somebody on you know, airlines so um, how many of you have flown Southwest? Yeah, most. Pretty good experience? You know, you know people, the, the, the thing you notice about Southwest is the people are pretty charged up about working there. And so the fact that they end up delivering pretty high value to the end consumers pretty, is usually uh, pretty remarkable. You know, pick any other airline. Um, you know, pick uh, Delta or US Air. You know, do the people do the people look like they're having fun working there? And is it reflected in the service? Yeah, you know. So you know, to, so that, those are extreme examples, but to us, it, it, it works. You know, so all the all the stuff that sounds really good and you know sounds like the right thing to do, it also works. So you know, you treat your people really well, make it, you know make your company or your organization a great place to work, and you will see it reflected in great service. And so. Um, we, uh, as we came through this with so much focus on the external uh, clients, we wanted to make sure we had an equal amount of focus internally to make sure we're doing everything we can to uh, be a great place to work. And again, this kind of framework for me um, is, is really important 
because it can be applied to any business. It's not, you know, this happens to be how we did it at Vanguard, but it can be applied to any uh, business that you could describe. So if I had to wrap up, and then I, I, I really do want to um, open it up to questions, you know, I would say as we've sort of reflected on the last three years, um, the things that have become really clear to us in, in terms of, you know, sort of simple lessons, and this is both internal and external, is focus is really important. So, you know, this, the, that flywheel I showed you, you know, the, the asking yourselves what, what could you truly be best in the world, very focused and disciplined strategy is really important. And in the middle of the crisis, just focus on getting the job done uh, was really important. So focus ends up being a very key thing. You know, again, to quote Jim Collins, um, he likes to describe successful organizations are made up of disciplined people doing disciplined activities. And uh, I think that's reflected in the idea of focus. You know, the second is engagement. Um, as, I, as I just said, having an engaged workforce leads to better results from a uh, service standpoint. But I would also say having engaged clients is really important. And during the crisis, making sure we were engaged with a client uh, and that they could see us and, you know, uh, reflect on what we were saying directly was really important. And that really links to uh, transparency. Um, you know, we tried to be as transparent as we could. You know, here's what's going on. Here's the data. Here's what we think about the data. We continue to do this, by the way. You know, if you go to the website, every day there's usually a new piece or a webinar or, you know, a podcast or something trying to take on one of the short-term myths that may be out there, trying to um, add some clarity to what's going on. And we think that transparency to the client is very important, but we also think transparency inside the company is very important. And, and people have to know sort of how you're dealing uh, with these difficult times. And then, um, you know, again, I think you've gotten the sense that uh, we have a very strong belief that ethics, doing the right thing, uh, is, is a winning strategy. You know, it's interesting to me, um, and again, this will sound uh, braggadocious, and I don't mean it to be, but during the crisis, it, it, we probably had a larger market share gain than any time in our history. And I think it's because during really unsettled times, people tend to go to uh, businesses or firms that they trust. And so to me, it just underscores the importance of always doing the right thing because when things get tough, that's what people respect the most. It's in, you know, when things are all, you know, the markets are booming and everybody's happy um, and nobody thinks anything can go wrong, it's, it, you know, it's interesting. They don't always think about this as, as much as they should or as much as we think they should. But when times get tough, people go right back to basics and who do I trust? And so, again, I would encourage you as you're thinking about you know, where you might work or uh, what kind of company you might want to create someday or what kind of organization you might try to shape, um, you know, if you, if you focus on that ethical part and doing the right thing, you'll have a huge head start over a lot of firms and a lot of organizations. <laughs>